So in the last video, I hinted at the fact that one, you should watch this before attacking the worksheet, but also that we can form two types of enolates when we do alpha deprotonation. Just a quick review. Remember, in basic environments, if we have a generic carbonyl, if we were to throw some base in there like T-butoxide, right, we deprotonate our alpha, we deprotonate the alpha carbon, the base would snatch up the alpha proton, you then take these electrons, you swing them in between the two, the carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon, you form a double bond, and then you kick up an electron pair to the carbonyl oxygen in a basic environment, and you form what we call an enolate functional group, right? With a negative charge on the oxygen, and uh, you know, a double bond between the carbonyl car well, the once carbonyl carbon and the, car uh, the alpha carbon. Okay. But don't forget the type of resonance we can draw, right? So we swing these down, reform the carbonyl, and have these electrons go on to that carbon right there. So at any given time, right, this is the form we are looking at. Okay. However, there are two types of enolates we can form. See, when you have a carbon that's or a carbonyl that's symmetrical, right, it doesn't matter if I deprotonate this carbonyl or this alpha carbon or this alpha carbon, right? It's a pretty simple situation. However, let me erase this. We need to kind of address what to do when we have, I'll give you guys this type of situation. Let's say we have this cyclohexanone and I put a methyl group right here just to be difficult. What do we do? And the answer is it depends on what base you use. So let me kind of give you guys two scenarios. So an arrow going this way and then a different reaction if I put an arrow going this way. Okay, so food for thought. Let me say that I give you guys hydroxide, zero degrees Celsius. Sorry, I'll give the, I'll write that better. It looks a little confusing. Zero degrees Celsius and THF, THF just being a solvent. Okay? And let me give you another scenario where we use LDA, or if you want to use T-butoxide, negative 78 degrees Celsius, and THF. Okay, so we get two different enolates, one called the kinetic enolate, one called the thermodynamic enolate. And here's the difference. So let's take the bottom route first. Okay, so we have extremely cold temperatures, and we have a very big bulky base. These are kind of like unfavorable conditions and the, the fast, the, the most easiest, the easiest, fastest thing is going to occur, right? Because it's so cold and because we're so bulky, we're not going to try and even get into this. We're not going to try and nestle into this more sterically encumbered alpha carbon position. What's going to happen is this base is going to grab the easiest alpha proton it can possibly grab. So that what you do is when you're looking for the kinetic enolate, when you see these conditions right here, negative 78 degrees C, LDA, you look for the, the least sterically encumbered alpha carbon and that's the alpha proton you grab. So what we would do is we would grab him, electrons would swing down here, we would kick electrons up to the oxygen. So if I just erase these, and then I actually draw you guys the product, we make the enolate, like the double bond goes to the left. Okay. On the other hand, if we have a smaller base, right, something that can kind of wiggle in there, right, and we have zero degrees C, it's a little warmer, what we can do is we will actually form the more substituted double bond, right, the more thermo thermodynamically stable double bond. So you have to look to see, right, where can I make the double bond with the carbons with the highest degree, right, because he's uh, tertiary versus this carbon being secondary. So instead, Right, if I'm going to put an asterisk down here to signify we take this car or hydrogen up there by asterisking, asterisking him, then we take this hydrogen on the high road. And instead of the uh, double bond going to the left, we're actually going to make our enolate to the right. Okay? So that's kind of the game we play with enolates, right? And I just wanted to make sure that was, uh, I put that out there and we discussed that together. I know in the worksheet, I have you guys decide between thermodynamic enolate 
and uh, thermodynamic enolate and kinetic enolate. But I'm also, I also make sure you guys draw both resonance forms, right? So remember, we look like this as an enolate, but we also look like this with the alpha carbon bearing the lone pair as well. And the reason why I want you guys to be comfortable thinking of an enolate both ways is because these are nucleophiles, right? We're going to be attacking um, partially positive carbons with these structures. And it's kind of, if you don't remember this structure, it's kind of easy to think that we're going to be attacking with the oxygen. But believe it or not, the alpha carbon is where the attack is going to stem from. We're going to be making bonds from our alpha carbon. Okay. So now that we kind of did that little review and that little introduction to forming enols, enolates, and then how to uh, decide between kinetic and thermodynamic enolate, go after that first worksheet. And then in the next video, we're going to start the first of three or four big reactions in this unit called the Aldol reaction.